Hello there. Have you ever wanted to roleplay being a thousand-year-old vampire? Well, so have I. I haven't really, but I suddenly feel the, the urge to do such a thing. So we're gonna do it. Let's go! Welcome back to the Sacred Art of Gaming. I am your host, Sacred. Today, we're gonna to be diving into a little something called Thousand Year Vampire. Thousand Year Old Vampire. And guys, this book, oh my God. I don't know if you can hear that, but it feels good. It looks good. It smells good. It's a, this is a beautiful book. People did not lie when they said such things. And, uh, yeah, the, the art and everything. I suppose I have multiple cameras. I don't need to be doing this. But, uh, yeah, this is a really interesting... So, <laughs> I have never done a solo journaling role-playing game. I never even considered doing a solo journaling role-playing game. But I just felt the need to do it. And not only did I do it, I even grabbed a special little book... This, uh, this is basically like, I think a, just a normal journal, but uh, this just looks like an actual vampire's journal. So, and it was super cheap on Amazon. Pretty solid, it, this, this feels good too. This is nice, I like it. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So if you are not aware of what the hell I'm even talking about, um, basically, with this game, you are essentially going to, it's kind of like a creative writing exercise, if I'm being honest, that's, that's kind of what it is, right? There are game elements to it, but it's like creative writing with choose your own adventure, and... I mean, that, that's about as much as I can say, having never played anything like it. Also, have never played this specifically. Uh, and I want to be upfront with you. I actually tried to play... I tried to fill out nothing. I tried to do all of it on camera, and I failed miserably. I tried to come in with a completely blank slate. And <laughs> I realized, man, the oracles uh, are very helpful. Which, that reminds me, I got an idea from another YouTube channel. Uh, I'll probably post a link to them down below. I'm drawing a blank right now. They used to be called like Science Fantasy Awesome or something like that. But I think they changed the name. And they gave a great idea to use the cards from Mysterium. And I almost didn't pull them out. Despite seeing that idea, thinking it was a great idea, and then just not delivering. Mysterium has some cool stuff in here. So I feel like I could repurpose other things in here. But anyways, let's get those cards out. All right, Mysterium. Mysterium cards, um, very similar to Dixit cards. But also, I did. Uh, I copied this from that channel as well. Um, I just have like some some D100 tables for names for the world that I'm going to be in. So let's let's jump into this a little bit. So Thousand Year Old Vampire, yeah, it's a lonely solo game. Got it. What do you need to play? You need a D6 and a D10. I also have a percentile over here um, in case I want to roll in that D100 table. And of course, like a notebook, pen, pencil. And I think that's it. So, how your stats work, you're going to have memory, skills, resources, characters, and marks. Uh, this sounded extremely foreign to me initially, 
but now that I've read, and honestly it's not much, you only have to read a few pages to understand like the rules of this game. But essentially what's going to happen is you're going to build your character with those things and you are only allowed five memories at any given time and that's going to be a big part of the game because uh, your vampire is going to be super old and <laughs> they're going to gain all different kinds of memories and experiences so they're going to have to forget stuff before they start doing new stuff so that's going to be a core mechanic of what's happening another core mechanic of what's going to be happening here is that you will be checking a skill so I, I feel like what that means thematically is that you're using that skill but you can only check it once so um, there may be prompts that allow you to unprompt them but uh, I don't know <laughs> and if you can't do that then you have to lose a resource all right and then uh, each memory I, I believe holds three experiences and then I believe there's a couple examples in here let you know like what resources are then your vampire creation this was what I really wanted to focus on so once you finish your vampire they will have three skills three resources a mark at least three mortals one mortal and one experience so those are the characters um, one experience in each of their memories and then this kind of explains to you how you would play the game which I'm going to kind of go into. And then the game ends if you aren't able to check or lose a skill or resource when required to do so, or her prompt tells you that, uh, that the game has ended, then the game ends. So, and then it kind of goes into, all right, there's two different ways of playing, a quick game and a journaling game, and then also answering prompts. And I'll kind of speak to this more as I play it um, and this just lets you know like hey be safe um, it's okay to be uncomfortable but don't like push yourself too far and this kind of gives you a brief little overview all right now before we go into that let's review our character his name Aldric Dubois originally from Castellon, France. I don't know if that's how you say that correctly. I probably should have looked it up. But uh, that's where he's originally from. Roughly around the time of 1125. Wanted to be like a little bit after the First Crusade. And he eventually becomes a Templar Knight. I was a little torn because you can kind of like pick whatever you want, right? I was a little torn on what I wanted to do. Whether I wanted to go the route of like doing something I want to know more about or something that I felt like I was kind of pretty familiar about and was very interested in already um, and that's kind of the route that I ended up going. Uh, the marks. The marks are basically going to be um, I may have to adjust that. <laughs> so I look tiny in the camera. Um, the marks are basically something that identifies you as being strange whatever makes you a weird creepy vampire in my case and you don't roll this this is just something that's fun for you um i went with uh dark thorn-like veins have spread beneath his skin that i feel like that was kind of cool to go with the uh the theme a little bit almost like the jesus crown type situation this this episode is not meant or this game is not meant to be religious or convey any religious views in any way I feel like that's worth mentioning um, or disrespectful to any peoples so if I get anything wrong or if anything is uh, portrayed in a way that is unfavorable or incorrect Feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and uh, you know, I probably will end up apologizing if that is a thing that happens. But just know that it's not intentional.
So I kind of wanted to make like a like a character sheet, kind of taking it from the back of the book. So there's your marks, your characters, skills, resources, uh, diary I don't technically have yet. And then my memories I wanted last because I felt like that was going to be the main thing that I was going to be writing. So there's my five memories. I started writing the experience and then I put the memory over it. So we discussed the marks already. And then there's the characters. So I have Amina al -Far Faridi. Uh, she is a Muslim healer, and it is actually a secret that she has been healing him and some other Christians. Sir Gautier de Montaferrat, he's a ruthless warrior from the First Crusade. I guess they fought side by side. Benedict the Scribe, an introverted Templar researcher. And then the Red Bishop, vampiric bishop that has been manipulating the church. And the, uh, he, that last one, the immortal, that's the one that actually turned me personally. Then there's the skills that my character currently has. Uh, we'll forget this one because I did just do the first thing. Um, empathy, sword fighting, and holy land lore. And then there are my resources, Templar armor, veiled passageways, and a holy relic. These veiled passageways... Those are going to be like secret passageways that allow him to traverse the city of Jerusalem undetected to some degree. Diary's blank right now. And then there's the memories. So uh, this first one is going to be just like his general background. And I feel like that could have been massive. I tried to kind of sum it up with the path to heaven is conquering infidels. Feeling responsible for the death of his sick father who was unable to escape a burning building, um, he joined the Crusades to earn his way into heaven. Now, these next four memories, um, which, did it say four or did it say three? Create three more experience. So your first experience is a little different. Next, create at least three mortals and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, then create three more experiences with one experience each being entered into a separate memory. I feel like I'm supposed to have five at the end. And one experience in each of the five memories. Okay, maybe that's a typo. All right. So... Uh, becoming a force on the battlefield, we're going to ignore this part for now. Um, I just wanted to get a feel. <laughs> Sir Gautier had a crazed way about him in combat, but he made sure I could defend myself. This is what I wish my father could have done for me. So he's kind of, he's got a bond with this person, even though they're kind of chaotic. We'll come back to the second part. Unlikely allies healing my unjust hate. Finding Amina and entrusting her with my unusual wounds. Uh, that's referring to the veins. And uh, it has changed the way I judge people forever. She is the true treasure of this land. So potential love interest too, maybe. Holy land secrets, myth and lore. Benedict has taught me, this is the scribe, so much about the holy land and, and how to move throughout the city undetected. Templar dominance comes from knowledge, not might. And then lastly, the hunt for holy relics. My thirst for knowledge could swallow a lake. The more I learn about holy relics, the less I know. Red Bim, the Red Bishop promised the Holy Grail and then bit me. <laughs> There's probably should be more flavor text there, but I summed it up with, yeah, you got bit. All right, and then those things that I skipped earlier. Um, so here, basically I'm resolving this first prompt. At this point, if you don't want any parts of the book or the story spoiled, um, I'm gonna go over like number one right now. But feel free to feel free to turn away or turn off the video, whatever you gotta do. Because at this point, there, we're gonna start getting potentially into spoilers. So this first, this is where you start. Um, actually, before I get into that, it's worth noting that they did say, after the first one, try and tie two of your traits together for these. So that's why 
you see like this first one is potentially that character, Sir Gautier, and then my armor, or swordsmanship rather. Um, here being the character Amina, um, and then also my wounds. Here is being Benedict, and um, the, the veiled passageways, and then lastly here the relic that I have, and then the bishop. Yeah, because I did go over my yeah my resources here, the holy relic too. All right, cool. So now let's get into this first prompt. In your blood hunger, you destroy someone close to you. Kill a mortal character. Create a mortal if none are available. Take the skill bloodthirsty. So that is where I added bloodthirsty here. That's where I just got that. Put the little check boxes here because I'm going to check those at some point. And the character that I killed was Sir Gautier. After going out of his way to embarrass me in front of the men, I confronted him later that night. A fight broke out and I was unable to contain myself. I fed on him. In shock and terror, I fled to avoid suspicion. Uh, presumptuously, or <laughs> assuming he went into those veiled passageways. Alright, from here on out... I'm going to probably minimize how much I am using this book. Maybe I'll look at the. I'm gonna try not to. I'm gonna try not to write in the book as much for multiple reasons during the stream, and I'll probably <laughs> stream. We're not streaming uh, during the video, and I, I think I'm gonna want to fill it out after while watching the video when I'm editing it, because uh, I feel like that's gonna take forever if I'm over here writing. So I'm going to try to speak to it. But this is where we get into rolling dice. How exciting. I'm using my metal dice, which I rarely do anymore, but they felt too appropriate not to use. So this is what's going to happen. First of all, I would like to explain there are three things here. Uh, so the first time I get this prompt, I'm going to do the first one. If I get this prompt again, then I can go down to the second one, and then if I get it again, I'll get the third one. Because I'm starting on one, if I end up with a negative number, that would be an instance where I end up with the same thing again. But once we get away from you know these very low numbers, I assume that's going to be harder and harder to do. So what's going to happen is I'm going to roll a d10 and a d6. I'm going to subtract the results on the D6 from the D10, and that will give me a number. Uh, if it is positive, I will go forward that many prompts. If it's negative, I'll go backwards that many prompts. Let's see what we get. I have been dying for this moment. No pun intended. A 3 and a 10. Oh boy. All right. I wonder how well those show up on camera. It looks like it actually seems kind of okay. So 10 minus 3 is 7. We're going forward 7. So... And I can never tell. These pages are kind of thick. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That brings us to 8. You are recognized for what you are by another creature like yourself. Create an immortal character, lose a resource, and gain a skill. What did you lose to them? Oh boy. Lose a resource. So I'm recognized by another creature. Uh, so I think initially what comes to mind for being, you know what, let's try the card. I keep forgetting about these damn cards I was so excited for. See if this gives me any anything. Okay, that's actually too perfect. <laughs> Alright, I don't know how much it tells me because it's almost like exactly what I just said. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... Hmm, there's pictures, bottles, I mean, there's there's a person. I'm going to draw one more, because that was just like two on the nose. 
umbrellas. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. This is. I think it's worth stating that I think this game <laughs> is probably good to treat more like a book to do like. Uh, you know, you're in your, your reading nook and you're just kind of very casually playing and you get to think on your own while you listen to the raindrops outside. It is kind of hard to do under pressure, which is why I did this other part off camera because I was struggling. Um, and I'm still struggling even with this base. So let's just start by rolling a name. Uh, let's say if it's... Odd, it's Christian. If it is even, it is Muslim. Even, Muslim. All right. So we got 64. Heba. Heba female. Eight on the surname. Heba Alkindi. Interesting. This is not where I initially was going with this, but this does give me a direction, so this is actually good. Because this ties me to... Amina. So maybe this person is also involved with Amina and maybe this is why Amina is kind of comfortable with treating my wounds because she has dealt with this kind of thing before. Maybe not with Christians, but vampires maybe is not that crazy to her. Um, also, every time you deal with a prompt, you would be writing an experience. There can only be three experiences under one, so I feel like that would go here. So we're going to lose a resource and gain a skill. What do we lose? I don't think we would lose access to the Veiled Passageways. I feel like, man, this story feels like it's like really built around like <laughs> holy relics and i feel like that's what we're gonna lose i'm gonna cross it out in pencil because you can get things later on uh, but i will initially write things in pen so the <sighs> i lost the holy relic i gained a skill so the skill that I think I would gain in this situation, I'm picturing this person. So female, Arab, Muslim, that is a vampire and takes the relic. Would I, would I catch her? Would I see her? How, would there be a confrontation? Um, I feel like there would be a confrontation between the two of us. And she would get the best of me, obviously, because she took my relic. But in that, I'm picturing us like Assassin's Creed style, like traversing the rooftops and stuff. So, I'm going to put for a skill in there, I'm going to say acrobatics. As we're like parkouring through the city. But I lose her. Alright. So, cool! We, I just did my first thing. And now we roll again. Normally this is where you would write it down. I'm trying not to because um, I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying not to be too disruptive to the video. Let's roll again.
What am I doing? I'm rolling the wrong dice. <laughs> Too excited to roll. We have a three and a one. So we go forward two. One, two, ten. The stars pinwheel above you in the night. The seasons are a blur. You are as an automaton, unconscious of the passage of decades. A century passes. Strike out a memory. Strike out all mortal characters. Boy, that happened fast. Um... <laughs> And I guess I would have to add that other character, huh? Um, I probably should have written that down. I'll, I'll do it later. Man, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Man, I guess I should have... struck this guy out... out the gate. Man. Man. Okay, and then strike out a memory. So, Jesus, that seems harsh. I'm not really sure what I would put here. Um, you know what? I think I would probably put, I think I would put something for Amina. So this took three lines. Do three lines here too, um, and here I would mention something about uh, being sad about her passing. I feel like at a minimum they would be very close friends, and uh, that would obviously not be ideal. E even if he's pretty cold and ruthless, that sucks losing someone who can heal you. Obviously. So what memory? So I get to choose this as the player, not as the vampire. Would he... Hmm, yeah. I mean, as the player, it makes sense to forget about Amina, because it's full at that point. All right. Keep on rolling. have a three and a five. So we are going back. I can't believe a century passed. Oh my God. <gasps> so we're already like, <laughs> we're, we're like in the future. All right, so this is minus two. So we go back two. So we're gonna go back to eight. We're gonna go to the second one here. You gain an advantage over an immortal character. What do you take from them? What do you learn? Convert a memory to a skill. Strike out that memory. Gain a mysterious resource. Ooh. Convert. Oh, man. So this would have been cool if I... I guess as a player, maybe that was dumb because the obvious thing would have been to <laughs> try and take back the relic. But, uh, yeah, technically I don't know about that because that is here. So I guess we will cross this out. You gain an advantage over an immortal character. I don't remember <laughs> the how I know the other one. So I feel like it would have to be the Red Bishop. I'm going to gain advantage over the Red Bishop. And I'd like to think that the Red Bishop has been throwing his weight around for a century now. Um... And the church probably doesn't have the power now that it once did, especially during the Crusades. Oh my god, I can't believe we're already out of the Crusades. I played for like five minutes. 
Oh, man. Okay. So... So, yeah, I think he probably has something on the Red Bishop. He has something on the Red Bishop, so there's going to be a memory that we will put here. Or an experience, rather. And that thing... What is that mysterious resource going to be? I mean, we lost a holy relic. Um, oh, you know what? Mysterious resource. Um, trying to think of a way to word like evidence of the red bishop a thousand years ago. Uh, red bishop. Hopefully, I'm not shaking the table too much. Vampiric or vampire. Evidence. Alright, so we gain advantage over an immortal character, which, I mean, yes. Uh, what do you take from them? What do you learn? Convert a memory to a skill, strike out that memory, gain a mysterious resource. So we gain the mysterious resource, so we gotta convert a memory to a skill. I think it's gonna be this one. And that skill is going to be... Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to go with Zealous as a skill. Zealous. Let's get rid of these cards. Alright, cool. Already at 34 minutes. Alright, let's see where we go from here. Currently at 8. Four and four, so that's zero. So we're going all the way through eight. A character you've angered has powerful allies. Create a new enemy immortal character who is the face of this mysterious group which harries you. Check a skill to escape their grasp. Take the skill, time to leave. Move to a far off region, lose any stationary resources. Take a new name. Okay. So we're losing the Veiled Passageways. We are taking a skill time to leave. They're very loose with these skills. Like this, it almost feels like tags in a way. Um, check a skill to escape their grasp. Did I fight my way out? Did I acrobat my way out? Did I use lore? Probably not. So, a character of anger is create a new enemy immortal character. Um, so I think this is going to be tied to the bishop, so this is going to be definitely Christian. Forty-five. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> uh, I think it has to be a male <laughs> to stay. Well, we're a thousand years in the future, actually, so maybe we'll stick with that. Um, I will leave this space for the other mortal, and then the surname is going to be sixty-eight. Rachel Lusignan. Okay. And mortal. Mortal. A lot of immortals here. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. Okay. And she's the face of this group. Um, I picture this being like an Illuminati situation. I'll make a space here. Um, nope, not here. Here. So, 
I could have swore I put a thing. I guess I didn't. Put one there. Um, because I believe we had something else we needed to add there. One, two, three. And then we will add this one here for dealing with Rachel. And we are definitely... I think we just got acrobatics and I think we're going to use it. So let's go ahead and check acrobatics. We checked a skill. I think we have covered everything. Yes, we have. All right, let's roll. Ninety. What am I doing? <laughs> Uh, okay, so it's another zero. We're just going to be stuck on eight forever. I believe there are alternates in the back. I'm not 100% sure how that works because I did not necessarily expect for that to happen. Some cool little things back here. Aha, here we go. This looks like alternates. Hmm. Alternate starting prompt. Oh, I don't know what all these colors, alternate prompts. Okay, this is what I want. Eight. A temple or monument is dedicated to some mortal you knew long ago. How do you react when you learn of this? Is it appropriate? If you still remember the mortal, gain one resource. If you possess something that belonged to the mortal, you may trade it for two resources. Okay, so... Did I lose the memory that I think I did? Oh no, I kept it. So I think it makes sense for it to be uh, Sir Gautier. For sure. Which is kind of funny because we killed him. Um, and then how do I react? I think, I think I'd actually be kind of happy about this and this would give me an opportunity to kind of like make amends with him in a way because at some point like there a thousand years ago already there was a point where I kind of looked at him as like a father figure so um although he clearly was somewhat of a pain in the ass at points with his uh I feel like he would have been one of those He definitely was rah-rah, you know, Christianity on the Crusades and, you know, kill all the infidels for sure. But there was some good to him. And then uh, he did bad things, but there was some good to him. Do I have anything of his? I do get to gain a resource. That's cool. If you possess something that belonged to him, trade it for two resources. Um, I don't think it's fair to say that my Templar armor necessarily belonged to him, but I will gain a resource. What would I gain from this? A temple or monument is dedicated. What would I gain? I have no idea. Somewhat apropos, okay. Okay, a big knight trying to chop down a tower with like a princess in it. Um, I think the resource that I would get from this is, man, I really want to say like meeting some of his descendants or relatives from a thousand years later. Um, but how do you put that into a resource? Because uh, that's a character, not a resource. 
Hmm. We have a knight chopping down a tower in the He's trying to escape. Um, I'm going to say... So we lost... We lost the Veiled Passageways. I'm going to say Gautier Estate is something that he now has access to. How he has access to it, maybe he... I mean, he's, he's a vampire. Maybe he's charming to one of the relatives, and he uses this as a way to uh, make amends. Like, maybe he's someone who he gets friendly with, and which we may explore later. Maybe we don't know that now, but maybe we'll know that later. And um, he is living there whether they know it or not maybe they just use it as like a vacation spa or something maybe they're not always there so that's he can go there and be a weird lonely vampire okay so back to eight where we live all right so we go forward one just live on these pages. Oh. You develop a system for feeding. What is it? What happens to those who die? Create a skill that reflects this. Okay. Wheel. Develop a system for feeding. We now have access to Gautier Estate. Um, I think... Hmm... We're a thousand years in the future, so... <laughs> ah, and I don't think we can fit... This is the downside of not writing it right now uh you lose track of what is actually cause either way i think that's full so i think we have to make a new memory and i'm going to at least do the memory which is like a container for the experience Got here, estate, feeding station. And what's going to happen here is that our character, me, I'm supposed to talk as I, but I want to say his name because I haven't said it in a while, Aldric Dubois. He uses this estate and he, whether it's him and the, the other character is in on it or not, uh, but this estate is being shown as a haunted place, which then brings people to this estate that is out rural. Um, it's, it's, a ways away from normal civilization and when people go there uh, they hmm what is it what happens to those who die create a skill that reflects this I want to say because I don't want them to be too nice because then this this is gonna ask the question of like what happens in this world when a vampire bites you I don't think it's going to be like a zombie thing where like you get bit and then you turn immediately. So he feeds on them, but every now and then like they'll just get a wound. And you know, he does his creepy vampire stuff and they're fine. Uh but every now and then someone will go missing, he'll overdo it or whatever. Which is not great. Creating a skill that reflects this I am going to say um, some type of 
I'm gonna say seduction. I think seduction is, yeah. I like seduction, even though like he's not necessarily always seducing them into like something sexual in this situation, but even like the art of selling. But I mean, and also seducing them into like, um, whenever he does bite them, he's got to find a way to bite them without them screaming. So doing the creepy vampire stuff of just kind of like, yes, you know, you're, you're fine. This is not the vampire you think it is. All right, and then I think this is gonna be our last one. So we are going back four. Last four is five. We'll go ahead and put this ribbon on five. Oh no. You murder someone you love or respect rather than let them expose you. Kill a character, check a skill. If you have no living characters, kill no one and create a beloved mortal character who you have betrayed. And I think that's where we're going to end it. Hmm. Murder someone you love or respect rather than let them expose you. Kill a character. So if you have no living characters, kill no one and create a beloved mortal character who you have betrayed. Well, I think we know what's going to happen there because every mortal I know is dead. But we'll leave that up to the next session. Um, if you're digging the content, definitely let me know. Let me know down below if there's anything you would have done different or something that I could have done better. Um, and what you think of the book. So yeah, that was interesting. It was a little rocky, it was a little bumpy, but I think I kind of got my groove. I don't know, um, I'm not 100% sure if the way I'm doing it is the best way, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. I may have to like just write down some cliff notes or something so I can keep track better, but I really don't want to like full on be writing stuff in here. So this has been Sacred with the Sacred Art of Gaming. If you love tabletop, role-playing, journaling games, apparently, <laughs> solo games, and you love to talk about it, all things related to it, and the concepts, and the mechanics, and how it makes you feel, how it makes your dog feel, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe, share it out if you think that there's some value in the content. This has been Sacred with the Sacred Arm Gaming, signing out.